Every year our roads and sidewalks are kept safe for cars and pedestrians by applying huge amount of road salt. And every year our beautiful beloved garden plants are quietly suffering from all that damage from salt. So in this video we are talking about exactly what is that salt damage on our plants to understand it better, which plants to use, how to protect our plants from ro road salt damage and what to do if the damage is done already. Olga Karmady with you, Master Gardener from Connecticut. We woke up to the beautiful snow today. Everything was white and nice outside. But the first sound in the morning, at 6 in the morning, was the sound of the snow truck, trying to clean all the snow from our road. And we live at the bottom of the hill, kind of near the big country uh, crossroad. So that truck was so busy trying to plow all the snow away that it was going back and forth, back and forth. And at the back of the truck, there is a, a salt dispenser, road salt dispenser, and it was just going splash here, splash there. The truck was going back and forth. That salt was overlaying the splash in each other right near my front lawn. And our, uh, as you know, we switched our front lawn, that strip between the sidewalk and the road. We planted flower beds there. So right now I was looking outside and the car just drove by quickly and all that salt, which already melted into uh, the snow, uh, went phew, right onto my hydrangeas. <laughs> so how does that damage occur on our plants? Well, there is no question that salt is very dangerous to our plants, to our health, to waterways, to our soil. And every year around 22 million tons of salt is being deposited on our roads and sidewalks in the United States, which is a huge amount. So first damage can occur when these uh, salt um, crystals get directly onto the tissue of the plant. And what happens then? That salt damages the tissue right away. The tissue which is underneath, which is tender, is exposed then. So desiccation is happening basically. And then when the cold weather comes, all that tissue is damaged and when spring is here we suddenly see the dieback of stems, the browning of leaves, the plant refuses to grow well and so on. The second type of damage occurs when the snow is gone and our roads have that white haze, right, with a dry salt. The uh, wheels of the trucks and cars do crush the, soil, the salt very well and now it's a mist which is just uh, uh, covering our plants and again get absorbed by the plants and our soil. What happens if those salt crystals get directly deposited on our soil? Well, there are a lot of things happening in the soil. When salt is, is dissolved into water, it basically breaks down into uh, sodium and chloride ions, and they interfere with the soil life, basically. So they prevent uh, roots of plants uh, from absorbing water, salt, absorbs water right so we have this artificially created environment in the salt in the soil where there is drought right there is not enough uh, hydration for the plant and plant is suffering from drought conditions second plant is absorbing also uh, salt um, um, salt chloride ions and sodium and the uh, plant can suffer from all sorts of uh, deficiencies next um, the presence of salt interferes with the structure of the soil. Soil is getting more compacted, it cannot hold water very well, it cannot hold nutrients very well. So there are a lot of damaging effect on the plants and usually the damage is not visible right away. We bring, uh, we come into spring and then suddenly our plants are stunted. They refuse to grow, um, they have damaged buds, buds which are not opening. Sometimes the damage from salt um, can bring to yellowing needles on evergreen uh, uh, plants. And generally the plants are failing and they don't die right away. If they don't die right away, we don't see the damage and we just uh, live happy, luckily thinking that everything is fine. And we sometimes do not understand why our plants refuse to thrive. So what can be done to, uh, to protect our plants? 
Well, physical barriers are great. Um, in my property, I know that boxwoods are very sensitive to salt damage and I would never even dream to plant boxwoods near the uh, side road or the road because I know that boxwoods, the minute they're sprayed, they're going brown. Uh, we can choose uh, salt tolerant plants and uh, my hydrangeas proven to be quite resilient to all that snow damage through the years although I never see anybody talking about hydrangeas as salt resistant plants and here are some plants you can choose to plant near the road if you have to and they are salt tolerant and here is the list of plants which are not and boxwoods are probably at the top of the list because everybody uses boxwoods um, in their gardens they are getting sick now in America a lot but still I see a lot of boxwoods being used and because they are hedging plants they use near the edges of their uh, pathways and roads and then we spray salt and damage is done the second thing what you can do if you want to uh, make your sidewalk safe we use uh, sand if we have to uh, we don't use salt never we never use salt on our sidewalks i don't want even to have that presence of salt um, so you can substitute usage of salt for sand uh, the third thing what you can do physical barriers which is kind of tricky because you don't want to put uh, burlap fabric right and one more thing, we live at the bottom of the hill, so we have a lot of water coming down on the road towards us and our driveway is a little bit lower than the road, it's becoming, it's kind of sinking now, so I see this little tendency where water rushes in and it goes straight into our driveway and gets absorbed by the side planting. So what I do now, when the snow is, the, the falling of the snow is finished, I kind of, when we plow, we throw the snow away from my uh, plants. I don't throw them on, the, on my hydrangeas. I throw all the snow from my driveway out, not to get it mel melted and then all that water goes into my garden, right? So if you can do the protection from runaway water, the salty runaway water, that would be great. That's important to keep in mind when you're designing your uh, um, hardscaping in the front of the house to make sure that you won't deal with any runaway water from the road coming into your garden. So what to do if the damage is already done? That salty mist is covering our plants. Well, I would recommend to wash your plants with water. Of course, it is done in warmer time, not in freezing conditions. And try to wash off um, the root area of the plant uh, with long watering. Uh, this way you will wash out all the salty water, the presence of salt. What I also like to do, I, after these big splashes of uh, salt on the road, I like to inspect my soil and handpick all the crystals. Literally, they don't dissolve as quickly in uh, the water. So they can sit there for several weeks. And then with the rain and all the wet weather of spring, they get into the soil. So I have this little time of several weeks where I can handpick all the crystals. And they're easily uh, recognizable on the surface of dark soil in, uh, before spring begins. And I just expose them all, throw them into the trash and get rid of all that toxic stuff ready to go inside uh, the root system of my plants. If you see the damage already on the plant, your plant refuses to grow. It goes into dormancy in uh, the fall very quickly, drops off leaves, looks stunted, doesn't want to grow, yellow leaves, damaged leaves, dead buds and all that stuff. I, again, I will wash deeply uh, the root area of uh, the plant to flush out all the salts. Adding organic matter would be also a great way to control uh, soil salinity. Uh, you can also, if you're not sure why plants are failing, you can also do a soil test and specifically mention there that you want to find out uh, the salinity, the level of salinity in the soil. So you would be able to find out that too. Biostimulants can be also a good choice for a lot of gardeners. You want to look into that if you see that your plants are failing refusing to grow and biostimulants are not uh, fertilizers they uh, kind of support plant in its growth and life so that can be an option too uh, for damaged plants 
So this is it, my dear gardeners, about salt and their damage, ways to treat plants and keep our gardens lush and healthy. One more thing I forgot to tell you. Which roses are tolerant of salt damage? Well, our beloved Rosa rugosas. They can take it all. They can take diseases, abuse, drought, excess of rain and also salt damage. Okay, my dear gardeners, I will see you next time. Please do subscribe and happy gardening.